Hello, Brad Davidson. My name is Dave Lindemann. I'm the fellow that wrote you about the mobile hive theory. The mobile hive theory, uh, the best way I can sort of give you an idea of what I'm driving at with that is uh, looking at a termite mound. Now, most of the termite mound is created from uh, inorganics that termites uh, have digested and then put down in a matrix that uh, forms to uh, uh, certain stress uh, parameters, sort of like bone. Now, so like if we look at the if we look at that uh, as sort of the, a model. Now, if the termites wanted to get their termite mound moving, uh, what would what would their approach be to encapsulating the mound? Uh, and somehow having a, a biological covering around it to move it around while they were still living in the inorganic material. So that looks at the human body or the uh, most creatures that are on the planet as having like an uh, autonomous part to them. And in your video, uh, it demonstrates that, that uh, the, the little amoeboid that comes out of it and as you say searches for bacteria or things that might be around it it's actually an autonomous animal uh, and why I'm interested if it, they were to return then that would sort of demonstrate that it'd be like a, a, a bee returning to a hive uh, with either information about the outside world if it's one way it still demonstrates it because uh, the amoeboid becomes autonomous, loses its life for the benefit of the rest of the hive, sort of like a soldier. So the, uh, the, the notion that inside of us is all of these amoeboids that uh, work autonomously, most people aren't trying to look at uh, the autonomy as we, we want to consolidate and look at ourselves as uh, individuals, but in fact that w once the, the cell splits off, uh, it's its own creature. Now, like the uh, Dictocilium, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, the ones that uh, they, they're a, a slime mold, they aggregate whenever um, you know, they have a amoeboid stage, then they come together and they form a Grex. The Grex is like a mobile slug. Now, imagine if those particular amoeboids uh, had a uh, work. Um, Mineral, they had a, a, a chemo, uh, they were anti uh, mineral. <laughs> so, in other words, wherever they had a mineral, they had to secrete it as a waste product. So, now here you'd have these amoeboids that would have a mineral that they would be wanting to secrete them, and if they would put them into some kind of matrix, well, while they're doing their little slug thing, they would be forming a, a skeleton inside just as a byproduct of their waste. So uh, uh, we s sort of see that in animals with endoskeletons. So the, uh, it, just, uh, it just strikes me then that, that if we have all of these independents working, then it's really sort of like a mobile hive and um, uh, there are a lot of animals that do that. The full theory that I'm working on is called paracatafungogenesis. Uh, it, that's just one, the mobile hive is just one aspect of it. Um, I thought I'd do this as a video just to play with the technology that we have available. Uh, I'm, not an ex I'm not a professional at this, so I'm just uh, tooling around with these ideas. There's a whole lot more ideas that go with the mobile hive uh, that have to do with size and lichenizing and things of, uh, um, of that nature. But, well, if this is at all, uh, if I didn't explain it fully, let me know. Uh, I'm just trying this out. Enjoy. Bye.